Hello and welcome to Dunset, a channel for intelligent and curious people like you who are searching for human sexuality and beyond in the age of artificial intelligence with your robot partners. And imagine a situation. Imagine a situation when you are going to touch your robot partner's body parts that makes it shiver. How does it feel? How does it respond to your touch? Now, it is no longer a niche capability. It's becoming a fundamental requirement for the next generation robot partners that need to operate safely and effectively alongside us in anywhere. Maybe it could be our bedroom, maybe it could be in our garden, in our dining room, anywhere. And how does it do that? It learns to feel and adapt. And how does it learn and adapt? Well, robots are shedding their rigid exteriors and becoming more like capable, intuitive human partners. Yes, they are becoming human partners, ready to tackle the world not just with strength and precision, but with a growing sense of touch and, dare we say it, a bit of finesse. They're finally getting a real feel for things. So, let's get into today's topic. Before we proceed, let me tell you one thing. If you have not subscribed yet, please subscribe. It means a lot to me. And if you have already subscribed, lots of thanks for your support. Imagine trying to find a light switch in a dark room. For the very first time, what you'll do? You would not just uh, move wildly, hoping for a lucky hit, unless you were perhaps uh, perhaps doing some uh, comedy acts like uh, touch this, touch that, hit that and uh, push something away, okay, break something and creating maximum chaos. No, you would tentatively reach out, your fingers brushing against the cool wall, feeling the texture, the edges of uh, maybe a picture frame, the subtle bumps and dips. And finally, you would adjust your hands path based on this constant stream of information. That means your fingertips getting feedback. And this stream of information is being processed inside your brain. And finally, a gentle exploration guided by touch will make you reach to the destination that is your light switch. This quiet conversation between your hand and the wall, this real-time feedback loop, we call it real-time feedback loop, is precisely what gives robots their grace or at least saves them from a life of being spectacularly clumsy in anything but the most perfectly predictable worlds. But it was not like before, before they were clumsy. I talked about it in my previous videos. If you have not watched it, I will request you to watch. And at the same time, I will request you to uh, consider uh, joining, signing up for our membership zone because that will support me a lot. Now, come back to our robot partners. For a long time, Many robots were frankly a bit like that, uh, that comedian, what to say. That means they are programmed to follow a rigid path. And they hit, they boom, they press button or not done, crash things out. That's a total mess. This is where the magic of feedback soups in. Particularly the kind that involves good old physical contact. Think of it 
as giving the robot a sense of touch, allowing it to literally feel this way through a task. When a robot is equipped with sensors that can detect force or pressure, perhaps in its grippers, its joints, or even when it spreads uh, its legs across its skin, a very, uh, very, very uh, intimate parts, it starts getting whispers from the physical world. These whispers are information. Like what? Like, oops, bumping into something. Oh, something is entering inside me. Or hi, this is softer than expected. It's not too hard. Or even, ah, found an edge. This sensory input is not just for passive observation. It's immediately fed back into the robot's control system, prompting it to adjust its actions on the fly. It's like your hand automatically easing up the pressure when you feel something fragile in your grasp. This dynamic adjustment based on physical interaction is often what we mean by compliant motion control. Basically, this compliant motion control is a vast topic. I'll talk about it in later video in great detail, of course, because we are covering robot partners uh, from every possible angle. So, uh, take the classic slightly exasperating task of trying to insert a pig into a hole. Now, it's a it's a symbolic representation. You are inserting a pig into a hole. That means you know you are intelligent. You know what I mean. When you are inserting a pig into a hole, you are inserting something else, somewhere else, right? So a rigid robot programmed to move the pig to a specific XYZ coordinates might just jam it against the surface if the hole isn't exactly where the program thinks it is. But it is not in our case, right? We insert the pig into the right hole into the right coordinator. We know that we need to place it here. We need to push it. We need to pull it, push it, and then boom. So it would be like trying to thread a needle with a boomstick. No, that is not, uh, that is that is true for a robot, not for us. It could be frustrating, therefore, and ultimately unsuccessful. But when a re robot uses uh, motion control, motion control means compliant control kind of things. This approaches this challenge uh, with a bit more finesse and a lot less brute force. It moves towards success. The task accomplished. As the pig makes contact with the surface around the hole, force sensors detect the resistance the robot doesn't just stop, ahead, stop dead, it interprets that force as information and it processes inside its brain. It might then initiate tiny searching movements, gently probing the surface, filling the edges uh, of the hole like fingers tracing an outline. We do that inside the dark room. The feedback from the force sensors guides this minute adjustments, nudging the pig this way and that until with a satisfying little click, it slides neatly into place. And you know what I mean? When you slides neatly into the hole, it works. You are successful. The robot isn't just executing a command. It's actively solving a physical problem. Remember, it's a very physical problem. Using its sense of touch. And we use our sense of touch while we insert a peg into a hole. Isn't it? This newfound ability to be adaptable, to be less rigid and more yielding, opens up a whole universe of possibilities beyond just fitting pegs into holes. This is a part of our life, right? Inserting peg into holes, it's a part of our life. It's not all. 
it's not all about robotics or human life because it could be satisfying and it might be but it is also essential for tasks that require a delicate touch basically here you know touch matters the sense of touch that matters where a heavy handed approach would definitely uh, spell disaster you can imagine a robot tasked with picking up a fragile piece of glass or a delicate electronic component this sense of touch is extremely important otherwise it will break the glass it will devastate the delicate electronic component component so with compliant control it can sense the pressure it's applying and adjust its grip force in real time ensuring it holds the object securely without crashing it is a robotic equivalent of knowing exactly how hard to squeeze a ripe tomato or something in your body part which is not of course not a ripe tomato right so without turning it into a sauce prematurely it will do uh, things that is proper to it there are a lot of other things also assembly tasks with tight tolerance it also becomes significantly more feasible and instead of relying on perfect alignment and hopping for the best a compliant robot can use force feedback to guide parts together there are a lot of other things but feeling for proper sitting and adjusting its motion to overcome minor uh, misalignments this is crucial this is really crucial touch touch is really crucial now this field is constantly buzzing with new developments that are making robots even more adept at this tactile task and researchers are developing incredibly sensitive and versatile tactile sensors and we will of course cover tactile sensors in a different uh, video so that you can understand it better but you can understand your robot partner better sometimes they are referred to as robot skin and uh, that is really very important and which can provide rich detailed information about contact pressure texture and even temperature across the surface when it when a robot hand moves around your body it will feel your texture temperature and it the contact pressure and finally it comes to the ability to touch and how does and the exactly in the opposite way it responds to your touch when you touch its body parts so that is it thanks for watching if you like this video please share with your friends don't forget to hit the bell icon for getting notified because i upload one video every day and i again request you to sign up for our membership zone it will support me a lot a lot it helps me a lot see you in the next video till then goodbye stay safe and take care